Today I'm going to talk about manifesting generator types in human design. I just want to say right in the beginning, generators as well as manifesting generators are all generator type energy. And so in a lot of ways they're similar, but in other ways they're not. So we're going to talk about what's different with a manifesting generator. But if you do hear me talk about generator types and generators, just know that the information I'm giving you is good for generators as well as manifesting generators. So there's no confusion. So let's get started and find out more about it. I've already done a video with a brief description of the different human design energy types. So today we're going to talk about the manifesting generator. But before we do, I just want to do a very quick overview of the energy types. So everybody in the world is one of these five energy types. The rarest of these types is the reflector. And then after that would be the manifester, then the projector, and then the generators are almost equal in how common they are. And if you add the two generator types together, they make about 70% of the population. Now, how do you know if someone is a generator based on their body graph? It all comes down to the sacral center or the red square down at the bottom of the chart. Now, it will always be red if it's a generator type and it will always be white if it's one of the other energy types. And for that reason, it's one of the easiest energy types to actually identify. So now that we know that all generators will have a red square or a defined sacral, What's the difference between a generator type and a manifesting generator? Well, it all comes down to a motor. I've already talked about motors in another video, but I think it's worthwhile just to review it one more time. In human design, there are four motors in the body. Generators will always have a red square or a defined sacral motor, but they're never limited to just one motor. In fact, they could have all four motors defined. And what do motors do? Well, motors are all about energy and energy movement. And when you have a motor to the throat, like a manifesting generator has, that means you have, according to human design, a quicker path from, in the most simple terms, dreams to reality. So what does it mean to have a motor to the throat? Well, let's find out. So to understand this, you just have to imagine that everything in human design is all about getting energy to the throat. Now, if you get energy to the throat, the things you've only thought about or dreamt can come into being or you can manifest them. But in order for it to actually come into being, you also need one extra ingredient, and that is the energy. And the energy only comes from motors. So in human design, the most important thing is really about motors and energy and getting to the place where things can actually come into reality. And that place is the throat center. And by definition, a manifesting generator will always have a motor to the throat, like I just said. So which motor will it be? Well, that's something that every body graph will show in a different way. So if you look at this chart here, and this is of Elon Musk, he has two motors to the throat. And we know he's quite a powerhouse of energy anyway. And it actually shows in his body graph quite nicely because he has the most powerful motor in human design directly to the throat. And not only does he have the sacral motor to the throat, but he also has the root motor to the throat. Now the root motor goes up through the sacral and then it goes right to the throat in that same path. So based on Elon Musk's chart, he has adrenaline energy going to his throat as well as sacral energy. So he's a powerhouse of manifestation. And I think we can probably see that pretty clearly in the real world. So if we look at another chart, this is a chart of Post Malone. Now, if you notice, he has three defined motors, another powerful chart, and two of which get to the throat. So that's will energy and also sacral energy. So once again, someone who has a lot of energy to create things in the real world. And we've seen that with him as well. So now that we know what a manifesting generator is, let's talk a little bit more about what it means to be a manifesting generator in human design. I've already mentioned that manifesting generators have a defined sacral or sacral energy. Well, what does sacral energy actually do for a manifesting generator? And how does it make them different from other energy types? To explain that, we need to talk about what defined and undefined means. I've already mentioned that if it is colored, a center is defined, and if it's white, it's undefined. But there's a bigger meaning than that. And that is that if something is undefined in the human design body graph, it means that the energy that comes into that center is inconsistent and also dependent on the energy of other people in their surroundings. 
But if the center is defined, it means the energy is much more fixed and is used in a more consistent way. What that means for sacral energy, for the generator types, it means that they have battery packs of energy that are charged every single day and they don't have to go anywhere else to get the energy from anybody else. But the one thing about this energy is in order to have a nice sleep at night, they need to burn that energy out and that needs to be burnt by activity. That's why generator types are considered the worker types, people who work at a deliberate pace to achieve their goals. So let's go a little bit deeper into what it means to be a manifesting generator. In human design, there's a term called your strategy that talks about the way you live your life and how you act in the world to get the best results. So what does a strategy mean and how can it work in your life? If you really want to know, please be sure to check out part two of the manifesting generator type. Hope to see you soon.